Hey, so the last week or so has given us a ton of gaming news, but also, more importantly, a bunch of fresh new gameplay to talk about. We got a bunch of gameplay reveals, and we got 15 cool ones we wanted to highlight and talk about today. So let's get started off with number 15 and talk about Alan Wake 2. We got a good glimpse at the new kind of survival horror -y gameplay. Developers Remedy said that they're shifting away a little bit from how Alan Wake originally played, uh, with 2 being more focused on survival horror and detective elements. And we certainly saw some of that here. We got to see a little glimpse at exploration, uh, some combat. The combat very much still focuses on the kind of flashlight to weaken the spooky enemies and then finish them off with a real gun. But it does look like the weapon swapping and the inventory management type stuff is reminiscent of the Resident Evil remakes, but also the graphics. Seeing the new character Saga explore these woods around Cauldron Lake was really damn cool, atmospheric, and spooky. It's definitely Remedy doing their thing. We've seen a lot of their visual tricks that they've liked to pull in more recent games like Control, and this is only really scratching the surface because we still haven't really seen many gameplay sequences featuring Alan Wake. We do know that the game is going to be split between these two protagonists, and you kind of get to choose which character story you want to kind of chip away at first. It looks like it's shaping up to be pretty awesome, and thankfully we don't have to wait too long because we'll be able to play the full game when it releases in the fall. Next over at number 14, we have The Spirit of the Samurai. We wanted to highlight some games in this list that kind of slipped under the radar amidst all the big presentations, but this is really cool. This is essentially like a stop motion 2D action game where you play as three different characters. You're gonna be playing as a human, a Kodama, and a cat. And it seems like depending on who you're playing as, they're gonna have their own kind of little gameplay styles with the cat seemingly more stealthy and sneaking around with the human doing some awesome sword play combat. That variety seems nice and combined with just like some spooky elements and just a strange atmosphere and an unconventional art style, this looks like it's shaping up to be, at the very least, a really unique game. As of right now, it doesn't have a release date other than coming soon, but we're really looking forward to playing something a little different and fresh. Next over at number 13, at the PC gaming show, we got a good look at gameplay from Ferocious. This is a first person shooter where you're shipwrecked on a random island and it's got elements of survival and action. And you're facing off against men and prehistoric dinosaurs. Apparently the action's going to be pretty over the top and the gameplay does seem pretty cool. It's definitely being built by a smaller studio, but still there are some really impressive visual and environmental effects going on here. And frankly, a fun, straightforward game that knows what it is and it drops you in a cool island and makes you fight against dinosaurs. Like, that's honestly just what we need sometimes. Still no release date on this one, but again, the important thing here is that we've at least seen gameplay, so now we at least know what it really is. Next over at number 12, we have John Carpenter's Toxic Commando. Uh, this one, at first, didn't really seem too interesting, but once they jumped into the gameplay, it seemed like a fun new cooperative zombie shooter where you're mowing down hordes of zombies with your friends in first person action, which I'm gonna be frank, sounds totally generic. We have tons of those games already, but there's two significant things here. Number one, John Carpenter's behind it. Maybe he's just getting a paycheck, I don't know. But number two is that it's centered around a vehicle, yeah. There's something a little bit creative and different here with your team working your way through these areas with a Humvee with turrets, spikes, defenses, and it seems like there are gonna be certain points in the game where this truck gets stuck in the mud and it's up to you to get it out while also stressing out about fighting off hordes of zombies. It seems like it can make for really tense, stressful, and fun gameplay situations. We hope that's the case. We hope it looks as cool as this trailer really teased. Also, the game just has a cool name. Toxic Commando just sounds really cheesy and 80s and I like it. Next over at number 11, also at the PC Gaming Show, we got new gameplay for Road to Vostok. We have talked about this one before in the past. Essentially, it is a hardcore single player survival game in a post-apocalyptic setting where you're kind of fighting your way across a border zone between Finland and Russia. And it looks like it's going to be somewhat slow, methodical and intense. And what we really got to see here with this most recent gameplay trailer, however short it may be, is that the game looks absolutely gorgeous. Dense foliage, realistically modeled, guns, that's like what you're looking for in this kind of game. And although that trailer was short, if you look into the game a little bit, there are a lot of cool elements of doing some strategy, hiding out in bunkers, and slowly trekking your way across this land. It's a really cool, unique concept, and we can't wait to see more of it soon. 
Next over at number 10, from the Devolver Digital Showcase, we got a look at a game called Baby Steps. This is from the creators of Ape Out, and uh, this looks kind of like uh, getting over it, if you've ever played that. Uh, kind of like a physics-based, awkward, weird game where you're kind of just walking. You're this goofy guy, apparently trying to find some meaning in his life, uh, and you're controlling how he walks, which seems like it's pretty challenging, because he's walking like an absolute goofball. It seems like it's gonna make for some really, really funny moments. We see tons of them in the trailer, with this guy just falling flat on his face. You love to see it. Hopefully this amounts to something interesting. I know it's not gonna be for everybody, but for the people that complain that we don't get enough unique games, here's probably one of the more unique ones, man. Next over at number nine, we got a look at gameplay for Banishers, Ghosts of New Eden. Now we've known about this game in the past, but it kind of just got a flashy cinematic story trailer. Now we actually got to see a little bit of combat and the characters moving around and it does seem like a really cool idea. You're like this ghost hunting badass guy uh, with a dead companion. So of course there's like a world shifting type thing, but it seems like it can actually happen moment to moment in combat. That's what we've seen from the gameplay and that seems very, very interesting if they actually really pull that off. Next over at number eight, we have Like a Dragon Gaiden, the man who erased his name. This trailer kind of picks up where the last one left off, but now we also get some gameplay. We get to see this new and improved badass secret agent Kiru fighting his way through new streets, using all kinds of new abilities with a cool style. And man, I can't wait for this one. You know, we really like the Yakuza slash like a dragon games of course but the more spin-off weird creative ones are frankly just where these games can really shine and thankfully we're going to be playing this one this year now next over at number seven if we're talking about gameplay reveals that blew the roof off mortal kombat one Wow. I mean, we can't even show a lot of it here just because it's so over the top and gory. Some of the new fatalities are out of this world. I don't know how they keep thinking these things up, but we have a look at gameplay with fighting that has more aerial combos, uh, new spins on old characters. Of course, this is kind of like a reboot of the series. Think of like reading a new comic run or a new comic series where there's different interpretations of characters you already know. But at the end of the day, you're still doing that Mortal Kombat fighting thing. But now you have a cameo system where you press a button and other characters jump in to assist you in battle. Seems like a good refresh for the series and we can't wait to see more soon. Next over at number six, we have Payday 3, which had a hell of a gameplay trailer during the Xbox presentation. There is a lot going on here. Bank heists, all kinds of crazy weapons, chaos in the streets, taking hostages, facing off against the police, robbing banks, payday stuff you'd expect, of course, but seemingly more over the top, action packed and refined. Granted, payday games are very unique and people like them for very specific reasons. So how this is gonna land with the hardcore payday community, I don't know, but just kind of as a casual person who dabbles in the series, this new one seems pretty fresh. Next over at number five, we have Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown. This initially got a big flashy trailer and a reveal, and a lot of people just didn't like the soundtrack choice of the trailer, and then other people didn't really like that you're not playing as the Prince of Persia himself. The prince is actually kidnapped in this game, and you're playing as these kind of important, powerful beings. But once they actually drop gameplay for this thing, this just seems like a really fun, action-packed, combat-based Metroidvania with, of course, Prince of Persia style traps and using time and manipulating it to your advantage. We've also gotten a chance to play this one a little bit behind the scenes and we will say like despite some people having some issues with the game, believe the hype, the raw gameplay is actually pretty fun. Next over at number four, we got gameplay for Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. And uh, from what we can see here, it's a very simple trailer. It does show a lot of what we expect, but we get to see over the top battles. Uh, we get to see the more bright, colorful biomes, the expanded world that these characters are now exploring, how exactly the events are gonna go down and how they're gonna be different from the original. Uh, the jury is kind of out on that one, of course, but we see the returning characters. Everything is looking absolutely gorgeous, just like Final Fantasy VII remake and although we knew this one was coming after seeing gameplay as familiar as it might be it shot up to the top of our most anticipated list 
Now next down at number three, we have Avatar Frontiers of Pandora. To be completely frank, and I'm not being rude here, it's an Avatar Far Cry game. I think that's the easiest way to explain it, but it's not necessarily a dunk on the game. It seems like they are building out a really impressive Pandora here, focusing on the Western frontier, some really cool new environments, uh, new Navi cultures here. And you're playing as a young Navi who uh, was apparently born on this planet, but ripped away from their world. And then after being held kind of captive and trained by humans, humans for years, you're dumped back out there. So you know how to use guns and be a badass, but you're also getting in touch with your actual roots, like the whole planetary thing. And you're taking down the bad guys, you're using bows, you're using guns, and you're also customizing your Navi and you're flying through the sky and riding animals on the ground. And if you're a lover of Avatar, from what we've seen of the gameplay, hopefully this will make you happy. It's Ubisoft though, you never know. There's some warranted skepticism there, but Avatar is cool and we hope a game can really live up to it. Now next, down at number two, we got a look at Assassin's Creed Mirage. Uh, just kind of some general gameplay of the character Basim walking around ancient Baghdad doing the Assassin's Creed stuff. They are really, really going back to their roots there. They've really been hammering that home. They've been saying that. That's like the messaging here. And you can tell from the way the parkour goes down to the simple assassinations to the hiding in crowds. It just straight up seems like an older style Assassin's Creed game, one that doesn't play like the new ones like Odyssey, Valhalla, stuff like that. This seems a little bit more basic, simple and straightforward. And I don't think that's a bad thing. I personally like the old style better. I'm just curious to see what Mirage's kind of tweak on that will be. Still, the city looks dense and compelling. Apparently, they've upped the stealth and the AI a little bit. And yeah, I know it's a nostalgia play, but it's just cool to see a guy parkouring around a Middle Eastern city again. They know what they're doing here. Now down to number one, I guess we're just sticking with a Ubisoft theme here for a second. We got gameplay for Star Wars Outlaws. This is a new, pretty ambitious open world Star Wars game where you're playing as kind of like a scoundrel bounty hunter character running, gunning, and third-person shooting, talking your way out of issues, stealthing around, using the environment to your advantage, hopping on speeders and driving around, interacting in towns, but also hopping on your ship, flying straight up into space in real time, seemingly, and then exploring space and maybe landing on another planet. It's nice to see gameplay here, although I will say I'm a little skeptical. I'm curious to see how the final game is gonna shake out. Is it actually gonna be this crazy? Because some of this seems a little too good to be true or too good to be real. I, I don't know, but this is gameplay. It was nice to see it. It's gonna be a while before we actually play this game, but they're saying sometime in 2024. Those were some great gameplay reveals that we wanted to highlight, you know, some stuff we didn't talk about yet, but we got a couple of other ones worth mentioning. We got a good look at gameplay for City Skylines 2, which looks to really, really double down on the detail of the original. Then we also got Clockwork Revolution, another thing revealed at the Xbox event that just looks like a really cool steampunk first person shooter RPG by In Exile. And then, of course, we didn't count it in the main list just because we've seen gameplay before, but this was a lot. We got a lot of Starfield gameplay. We're going to be talking about this one probably a lot more in some more videos soon. Still, those are some gameplay reveals we wanted to highlight just in case you guys missed anything. There is more stuff out there, of course, but we've tried to cover those in other videos. So let us know what you think of all these upcoming games that we've actually gotten to see. Not just heavily edited cutscenes or like pre-rendered CGI sequences. No, trailers that actually maybe had some flash to them, but also had some gameplay. Let us know what you were digging out of all this down in the comments. And if you like this video, if you like what we're doing here, we're just talking video games every day, clicking the like button helps us. Thank you. But if you're new, consider subscribing, maybe hitting that notification bell because we put out videos every single day. But as always, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time.